Hello YouTube, this video is the direct injection correction video. Um, the other video was right on point, I'm breaking down what happens with fuel with a carburetor injection, how it started out as throttle body, then it went to port injection, and went through the process. I just didn't finish the process off while I was shooting the video, Shop Mom, Elaine, is, some of y'all know her, Shop Mom is the, the rest of y'all may know her, some of y'all may not know her, now you do, was in town at Costco and there was an armed robbery that, that was, was happening there. She called while that was happening. Um, it rang, I answered. After that, I really wasn't uh, um, in the right frame of mind. I should have stopped the video then. Um, that's no excuse, but I did want to correct um, the video. I was uh, watching the video myself. I saw that I didn't take it all the way down to the end. Um, but great. I love the comments. Keep them coming. Hit the like and subscribe if you like anything you're seeing here. But I, I will put at the end of the video the the clip that I edited out of when the phone rang and how it took me a while just to get back in the, the, to the right frame of mind. That's still no excuse. Um, so let me go ahead and, and finish the process of what was happening. So fuel carbureted first then th then throttle body fuel injection then we're going to inject at the port then we're getting closer to the intake valve because of fuel atomization um then we have direct direct injection and that's where we're injecting fuel in the combustion chamber so that's the last part that i forgot what we're actually doing is injecting fuel in the combustion chamber. The injector is a lot more robust now. It can handle a lot higher temperatures. It can also handle the cylinder pressure. So anyway, if we're injecting fuel into the intake manifold, there's no pressure there, it's just vacuum. So all we need to do is have fuel pressure to help the atomization process happen. But if we start injecting in the combustion chamber, actually what we have is we have cylinder pressure, let's say 200 PSI of cylinder pressure, then now we need to overcome our fuel pressure to overcome the cylinder pressure. So it's a lot uh, more robust injector, but we're actually injecting it right in the combustion chamber. I'll try to see if I can find a picture of the combustion chamber, and you'll see a spark plug hole and an injector hole right in the combustion chamber. Why? Because fuel will revert back to its natural state and we want to take it right into the combustion chamber. So that was the last part of direct injection. Now we know the really what direct injection is. We're directly injecting it in the combustion chamber. All right, and one of the comments, really good comment, is, is how does this work for a performance engine um, that gets torn down and refreshing a lot? It is the way to go. I mean, don't get me wrong, in injecting right into the combustion chamber is the best that we can do with, with current technologies, um, and it is gonna make more power. And in a race motor, it's gonna be torn down and freshened up um, more often than a street car. So actually, it's a great thing in a performance motor. When the motor gets torn down to get freshened up, the ports get cleaned. Also, in one of the other comments, um, we're now seeing manufacturers, Subaru, Toyota, that are doing dual injectors. Really good, they're putting an upstream injector to clean the port. The majority of the air fuel is being injected in the combustion chamber, but they're adding another injector in the port to help clean it. So they're seeing what's happening as a, a, a bad thing and leaving the ports dirty, and they're adding fuel upstream now to help clean that. Um, also, I had some comments of, you know, the um, water injection. An another great thing to do. I really appreciate the comments and the feedback. If you like anything you've seen, hit the like and subscribe button. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your wife, tell your girlfriend. Tell your wife about your girlfriend. Uh, it's up to you. All right, as for me, I'm getting back to work. Maybe you should tell your girlfriend about your wife. There you go. Maybe you should tell your girlfriend about your wife. Maybe add that at the end. All right, as for me, I'm getting back to work. Thank you. All right, then we have throttle body injection. Excuse me, let me get the phone. Okay, YouTube, we're talking to... Hello, YouTube, today we're talking direct injection versus fuel injection. Today we're talking fuel injection diversion. Hello YouTube. Today we're talking direct injection versus fuel injection. What is the, the difference? What is direct injection? You probably know what fuel injection is. If you don't, I'll just go ahead and let you know. Um, if not, we'll just go ahead and, and, and... Okay. I'm a little shaken up right now, but all right. Let's see. So to, uh, hello YouTube. Today we're gonna be talking 
uh, direct injection versus fuel injection. Um, why you, why you should or you should not do? I don't know. Hello, YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about direct injection. Hello, YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about direct injection. Um, for, for those of y'all that don't know what direct injection. Hello, YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about direct injection. For those of for those of you who don't know what direct injection is, I'm going to go ahead and just bring you up to speed what direct injection is. Hit the like and subscribe button. If this meant anything to you, tell your friends. Tell your Tell your friends, tell your dogs, tell your parents, tell your girlfriend, tell your wife, tell your wife about your girlfriend, you might want to tell your girlfriend about your wife, that's all up to you, as for me, I'm getting back to work.